Man, I used to feel like king of the world, but now it's whatever. And I used to be in love with this girl. Any Moles, that's my boy Mike Tony. It's a company called Annie Moles. They make fantastic gear. I'll put the link in the description. What's up, everybody? How you doing? It's Mikey Fuesh from Fuesh Artist 101. And I'm doing another video today. I actually really, really, really like this video. Um, my friend, good friend of mine, Tori Bullock, who is an artist out of Boston, Massachusetts, and uh, he he lent me this book called Steal Like an Artist. And uh, I forget the author's name off the top of my head, but I'll put it in the link description. Um, and this book is fantastic. And it basically, uh, the concept is just kind of just pushing yourself to the next level as an artist and uh, really being yourself and learning how to be yourself and, uh, you know, do what you need to do, take what you need to take and, and uh, to get to that next level. And uh, it has tons of great things in there. One of the things I thought was really cool um, and it was, it was saying that when you write uh, to um, not write on a computer, to type on a computer, to write on paper. And he said that, uh, you know, just the, the act of feeling, actually feeling the uh, art that you're creating kind of helps to keep you motivated. And I completely understand what he's talking about. I, I've had a, I type a lot faster than I write, but sometimes when I have a blank page on a computer, I need to write a paper or I'm trying to write a poem or some script stuff. It's really difficult sometimes to just get started just because, I don't know, it's the screen, I don't know what it is. But sometimes I do feel that detached, um, that detached feeling. And so I started writing in notebooks. I have notebooks like, like this. I just have like tons of them around the house. And I started writing in those and I just feel like I breeze through those things like, like crazy. But that's just one thing. Uh, the thing I want to talk about in this video uh, is called artistic lineage. And I think it's a f such an amazing concept. Um, he, basically what he says is, you know, in this world, uh, we connect ourselves through our parents and their parents and their parents. And you, know, you watch like Game of Thrones and things like that. And like it's all about your family's name, like the Starks or, you know, whatever, um, a Lannister. You know, Lannisters feel that sense of, of connection to their family through their lineage, through their last name. But he's saying, as an artist, you know, it may not always be like that. You may be the only artist in your family or uh, in your community or of your particular art form, you know, so it's kind of hard sometimes to feel like you're a part of something. So this really, really great tip that he said was uh, to find an artist that you uh, love, like that you are just like, you know, that you really, really respect, that you really admire their work. Mine is probably would be Christopher Nolan, I think. Even though I'm not really a director, I've directed some and I probably will do a lot in the future. I'm mainly an actor. I do a lot of different art forms, but Christopher Nolan, <laughs> Christopher Nolan is the freaking man. I mean, The Dark Knight, Inception, Memento, The Prestige, The Prestige, The Dark Knight. I mean, how can you say no to those things? So he says, imagine that person as uh, your, your predecessor, the person before you. And uh, study them, study everything about them, uh, their, their, you know, their techniques, their likes, their dislikes, how they go about uh, creating. And then once you feel like you've not mastered that, but you've really gotten into that, you uh, look up what their inspirations were. Um, so I know like film noir was a big inspiration for him and there's a lot of other artists and things like that. Then you take those artists and you study those artists and you study those genres um, and you create this branch and this tree of artistic uh, family, like an artistic family tree. So I look at Christopher Nolan in that sense, and Christopher Nolan looks at some people in that sense, and those people look at other people in that sense, and at that point, you kind of feel like you're the next one to continue on that family line. Um, it really, it's a really, really, really great concept. It helped keep me really focused and really deciding like what I, uh, just what kind of things I liked um, from that perspective, like as a director and as an actor, what kind of things I was into. Um, to be able to study Christopher Nolan and see the things about him and where he got those things from that make him special and where he got those things from from other people. Uh, so my task to you, to everyone at home, whether you're an actor, director, um, visual artist, you know, a painter, anything, find an artist that you are really, really, really passionate about. Someone that, you know, that you would just put in that top five category, you know, for yourself. Find that person and study them. Study everything about them. Study you know how they grew up, where their passions are, 
uh, study the things that inspired them when they were younger, whether it be their parents, their friends, world events, things like that. Study all that stuff and study their work. Go through their work and try to make those connections. And then slowly but surely build your artistic family tree and start to um, find out those people that inspired them and then study them. And you'll, I'm telling you, you're, you're going to discover a lot of crazy things about yourself uh, as an artist and as a person uh, once you start to connect to people in that way. And then on, on top of that, you kind of feel the sense of power that, you know, it's, it's now entrusted to you to to carry on the legacy. Um, now, <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of um, Nolan Sanity dudes that are going to be commenting uh, down and below that are going to say that I will never be another Christopher Nolan. And, you know, that might be true. But whenever you emulate someone that you're passionate about, you know, you kind of, um, you usually interject a lot of yourself into that. And it usually ends up, the final result ends up not really being your predecessor's work, but just being a whole new work in and of itself. You know, and everybody does that. You know, singers and dancers and um, actors. You know, we always have people when we're kids that we just copy, that we just try to do everything that they do. I know The Rock talks about a lot of his, um, Dwayne Johnson talks about a lot of his, the people that he used to look up, up to and stuff like that when he was coming up. And, you know, he became his own person. He is The Rock. He's nobody else but The Rock. And that's eventually what it'll do. The more you, the more you try to pick out the things that you like about people, and the more you will subconsciously um, inject things about you that they never had and that their predecessors never had or thought of. And you'll end up creating a uh, unique work all in of itself. So that is uh, a really, really fantastic technique. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm doing it right now as we speak. And definitely comment on the videos and let me know um, what kind of uh, family trees you guys are coming up with. All right? Thank you very much, everybody. Stay fresh. Sure. Higher, higher, up, up, higher, 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 hig